traffic junction is always jammed. It's a typical Tuesday for Evi Siong, a busy real estate broker in Singapore. This is the place I'm going to, the property here. Today she's showing us her downtown listings. And even though we haven't crossed a bridge, driven through a tunnel or been on an interstate, we've already racked up $2.50 in tolls just by driving downtown in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week. In Singapore, it's pay as you go. Tolls are collected automatically under a plan known as electronic road pricing or ERP. The goal, to unclog urban traffic jams by discouraging driving on popular roads during peak hours. Unless I have no choice, I will travel a long way uh, to get to the place if I can avoid the ERP system. Singapore's road pricing system, the world's first, was born out of necessity. An island nation of about 400 square miles, Singapore is crowded, the third most densely populated country in the world, with 4.8 million people. We have been, in a way, forced by circumstances to do many of the things uh, that we had to do. Because land is so limited, building roads comes at the expense of houses, schools and offices. So the government strictly controls the number of cars on the road by making it very expensive to own one. Citizens must bid for a license just to buy a car, a permit which can cost as much as the car itself. And that's just the beginning of what drivers have to pay. But once we get in, we had to go to another gantry. Every car in Singapore is fitted with a unit that holds a refillable cash card. As drivers pass under what's known as a gantry, an electronic eye deducts a toll. It's not rocket science to know that if you charge people for use of certain commodity, that use is managed and controlled. To keep traffic moving, toll rates are higher during the rush hour. So by pricing the roads at different rates at different times, you actually encourage people to shift their patterns. And residents here have, despite the relative wealth of the country, fewer than 30% of Singaporeans own a car. As our population grows, our public transport networks need to grow in tandem. Road pricing works in Singapore because the country offers a viable alternative to driving in its public transportation system. Bus stations here are lifestyle hubs with free wireless hotspots. Commuters receive text messages with updated transit information. You can shop, bank, eat and transfer to other buses or the subway known as the MRT. Next station, City Hall. The MRT is the backbone of Singapore's public transportation system. It opened in 1987 and has an average daily ridership of 1.7 million people. That's up nearly 70% in the 10 years since the road pricing system was implemented. We want to make our MRT system a welcoming place. That means people will use it, they will feel comfortable using it. And people do like it. A 2008 Gallup poll named Singapore's MRT the best in the world in terms of customer satisfaction. Uh, we took extra care to ensure that uh, when we designed the stations, we wanted to ensure that the stations are spacious so that people feel comfortable walking in them. But not too comfortable. Loitering is illegal and there are hefty fines attached. You see, it's not working. Oh, I've got some problem with the cart. I've got to pull over, otherwise I get fined. <laughs> In this country, famous for its fines, there are, of course, penalties for driving through the gantries with insufficient funds. <laughs> this is what people say about Singapore. Pay, pay, pay is a fine country. Fine, F-I-N-E. Not surprisingly, road pricing in Singapore isn't popular with drivers. First complaint really is that I've got to pay. And people don't like paying for things which they perceive to be free. I mean, I've paid my road taxes, I've paid my income taxes. Why do I need to pay for this? Some merchants in Singapore's Chinatown have another complaint. They say the tolls are discouraging shopping in their area. The government is well aware of their unhappiness. They don't agree with it, but I think they've come to accept it. And I think that's probably the best that we can hope. 
And how, Mr. Minister, do you get to work? I drive myself because A, my time is valuable and B, because I can afford to. For World Focus, I'm Daljit Daliwal reporting from Singapore.